Hey everybody, welcome back to another Classics Are Better. I'm Travis and today we are talking front hub assemblies, my friends. Specifically 99 to 06, Silverado 1500s, Sierra, Suburban, Tahoe, anything from the early 2000s with the six lug uh, bolt pattern. This is the video for you guys, my friends. So mine has gone a little wonky on my Silverado. So I'm gonna change it. You guys can go ahead and learn from me. Let's go. So we're gonna be working on my 2006 Silverado Max that I call Max, super original, I know. But I was at the tire shop the other day getting new tires and I realized when it was up on their lift that I could rock this in and out, which is a surefire way to know that your hub is junk, which it happens. I mean, they're all 20 years old or about 20 years old or so, and the bolts just get fatigued. You know, this takes a, a big beating when you're driving around. It's also a huge safety thing. If that was to full on just brake, it's the tire, the wheel, the brakes, the rotor, all that is coming off either while you're towing something or you're driving. It's not fun to be an instant three wheeler. Anyway, I'm gonna show you guys how to get this uh, fixed up quick and easy and pretty affordably too. All right, so again, all the big box stores have these. I got these off of Amazon, so I'll put the link in just because they were about a third of the price. But you just wanna make sure they're part number 515036. Um, I also went ahead and got new bolts. I highly recommend you do that as well. Yours are almost 20 years old. Better just to start fresh as that's probably what is being stressed out or at least one of the factors in your hub failing. All right, so step one is gonna be getting this wheel off the truck. So use a jack, use a jack stand, chalk it up if you need to, be safe about it, but get your wheel off of the truck. So now that the wheel and tire is off, we're gonna take this caliper off of here. So it is held on by a bolt here at the top and one at the bottom. Some are T55 Torx bolts. Mine are actually 19 millimeter. So I'm gonna remove these from the top and bottom use a c-clamp to press in the brake pad here to condense the pistons inside this and then the whole thing should just slide off and we'll sit it up here on top of the a-arm all right now we're gonna use a c-clamp to press in the pad here be able to slide the caliper right off and again we are going to put it up here do not let it hang from your brake line try not to pinch your brake line just let it do its thing right up there up top now that the caliper is safely sitting on the a-arm it's time to get these brake pads out of here and then that way we can remove this caliper bracket and the rotor off of the hub assembly here So here is a good look of how your caliper bracket attaches. It's essentially an 18 millimeter bolt right here, right here at the top. So we're gonna get these two wrenched loose and then remove the whole bracket from the rotor. All right, the next thing is to go ahead and get the rotor off once you get the bracket off of there. Um, it should just be sitting on here pretty loose. If you have to manhandle it a little bit, that might happen. Um, but try not to touch your surfaces or scratch them up or anything like that. Just as little contact with this braking area as possible, just so your rotors don't get messed up. So once you get the rotor off, you'll see back here, there's a wire going into this thing in the back of the hub. This is your TPS sensor, so that's your tire position sensor. It basically works with the ABS brakes to tell it how fast everything is spinning in here and if there's a braking issue. These are actually new in my truck because I had an issue where my ABS was going off when it was under like five miles an hour. I thought these were going bad. Turns out that can be a side effect of your hub going bad. So if you have that issue, besides checking your sensors, check make sure your hub is good. Basically, when this thing was rocking around when driving, this thing was losing signal because it's basically a fancy little magnet that just checks when the bearing's spinning in there. To remove the sensor, it is just a single five millimeter Allen wrench bolt. And this just pulls out. That's what your sensor looks like on the inside. Once you get the sensor off, just go ahead and use a, like a flat blade screwdriver or a flat edge and a little hammer and pop this cap right off the edge. All 
All right, so sorry about the light shift. I had to go to the store and get a 36 millimeter socket. I didn't have one that big. But that's what your axle nut here is gonna use. Once you have the axle nut almost all the way off, there's three 15 millimeter bolts. So one, two, and three that hold this thing on. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and back those off and then use a mallet or something to kind of bust this loose. And then you can take off the nut and pull the whole unit right off. So just quick tip, if these are seized up on you like mine were, hit them with some PB Blaster or WD-40, just some sort of penetrating oil. And then I also have some of these, like I think they're called crow's feet, uh, attachment for a socket uh, that is like a little wrench attachment. And that can help you crank it on some because you can get some better leverage on this thing. All right, and once you got those three bolts out, go ahead and get your socket back out, remove the nut here in the middle, and then just pull the whole thing right off. You also have a washer up under here. All right. So save your dust shield, you're gonna need this. All right, I again highly suggest using brand new bolts for this. My old ones got really chewed up. They were so rusted on, just trying to get them off. So I'm gonna feed these through the back while I can still get my hands around everything and move the axle around a little bit as I need it. And we're gonna put the brake shield on the new hub, get it all on here, start getting it all put back together. So once you have your hub secured by your three 15 millimeter bolts, tighten them down to 75 foot pounds of torque. And then now we're gonna hook up our TPS sensor. So run it up the way that the factory has it and you'll see it just connects to your wire harness right up here. You just click it on in. So now you just get the washer back on, get your axle nut back on here, get it tightened down, and then we'll start getting the caliper and the rotor back on. Once you get your axle nut back on there, go ahead and get your rotor back on and then I'm just gonna grab a single lug nut and screw it on here just to keep this uh, rotor from falling off and go ahead and get my hub back on All right, so it is never fun spending the afternoon fighting rusty bolts, but we got it done. Go ahead, drive around your neighborhood, test it out, make sure you didn't miss anything, but you should be good to go. So if you guys got any value or good information from this, please hit that like and subscribe. It really helps me out. But other than that, get out there, get wrenching, my friends. I'll catch you all in the next one.